All right, 90 Day Fiance season 10, episode 5. There's lots to cover, lots to talk about. It was a great episode. So let's get started. We're obsessed with TLC and all the trashy reality TV. It's It's a a recap. recap. It's a recap. It's a recap. Rob and Sophie continue their conversation about whether or not they want to have kids. And Sophie basically tells him that she doesn't want to be pregnant because of her medical issues. So it's either surrogacy or adoption. So then Rob is like, okay, I definitely want little versions of me running around. I mean, I would like to raise little me's. So I want to do surrogacy. And she's like, okay, then. And then he tells her, you really need to think about what you want in life, okay? And this part was really frustrating because... As a 32-year-old man, he should understand that it's perfectly normal for his 23-year-old girlfriend to not know what she wants in life yet. Her prefrontal cortex isn't even fully developed yet. She has two more years. And for him to just expect her to know right away and to like kind of force her into a decision isn't fair. I just want to make sure I have my life together first. I don't want kids, you know, while I'm still trying to figure stuff out. I mean, I just got to America, so I have a whole life to kind of sort out right now. I feel like for a lot of people, they don't know what they want until much later. And even then, like, you still don't know what you want or you're constantly changing what you want. And I think that's okay. When I was dating an older guy, he was at an age where he wanted to get married and settle down within the next three years. And I was like just out of college and I was still partying and I was nowhere ready. I know some girls are ready like right away to get married and have kids by 21, 23. I was not. So he knew that. And he broke up with me because he was like, honestly, I love you so much, but I'm in a stage in my life where I want to get married very soon and I just don't see you wanting that and um, you should be allowed to go party and explore your life. And at the time I was young and dumb and I was like, okay, no, 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 I'm ready. I'm ready to be a housewife and have babies and be a mother. Like I'll do anything you want. Like just don't break up with me. Oh, cringe. But looking back, obviously as a full grown adult now, I understand that he was actually very mature and I 100% agree with his decision now. Um, I feel like Rob just doesn't have that level of maturity. So anyway, when he told her to figure out what she really wanted, she was like, I want you, Rob, the knob. I want you. I don't know what is so great about him that she wants him so bad. Now, what she really should have told him was to figure out how he was going to even pay for surrogacy. We're talking at least a hundred thousand dollars how the hell is he gonna afford that of course unless he thinks she's gonna pay for it which isn't fair at all considering he's the one who wants the kid not her i feel like maybe he's just assuming that she'll pay because she's quote rich which by the way the more i see of her the less i believe she's quote rich She just doesn't come off as somebody who grew up wealthy, who was born into a lot of money. And this is no shade to her at all. It's just that she introduced herself as somebody who was born into a lot of wealth. And this is just not giving wealth. You know what I mean? I believe that she likes nice things and she buys nice things for herself and she spoils herself, but it's not giving rich, rich. Hopefully that makes sense. Rob is going to be in for a rude ass awakening when he finds out how much surrogacy costs. Later on, Sophie FaceTimes her mom and tells her about the whole thing that happened with Rob the Knob and kids. And she tells her mom that they talked about surrogacy and adoption and they decided to have a kid through surrogacy. And the mom's like, are you sure you want kids, Sophie? Like, just make sure that you're not just agreeing to this because you want to make him happy. You have to want this for yourself, too. And Sophie struggles with this because she is a people pleaser. I've never really thought about kids. I am like a massive people pleaser, but like, obviously this is my life as well. So it's like, I'm not gonna people please for my future. You know, I don't wanna have children if I'm gonna resent the kids. Oh, Sophie, do not have kids just to please your man. Later that night, they're getting ready to go clubbing out in LA and Sophie's super excited because this is her first night at a club in LA. It sounds so cool and so hip and whatever. And Rob has only been clubbing twice in his whole entire life because it's a lot more expensive for men, 
like apparently hot girls can just get in for free and have everything their way but he's a guy so he has to spend at least a hundred dollars every single night he goes out clubbing i've only been to like uh, one or two clubs in LA. really yeah because they're mad expensive it's like a hundred dollars to get in some places Oh, God, he can't even afford to go clubbing, yet he's talking about surrogacy? Oh! They meet up with Rob's friend, Tarai, and the whole dating app situation comes up, and he's like, are you sure you were on the Bumble BFF side and not the Bumble dating side? And she was like, no, I'm really sure. I met my best girlfriend, Soraya, who she's coming, by the way, on the Bumble BFF side, and now we're best friends. One yeah, friend? yeah, no. my friend Soraya is coming. Oh, where'd you meet that friend? Okay. I just met her on like a friends dating app. Oh, yeah, a friends that's where I meet all my friends. friends that's <laughs> what we call them now, friends dating apps. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know they made those. Yeah, I they thought did. they were just dating apps. And then Tarai's like, "Are you sure you're not bi?" Which is such a weird question. Like, who would go straight to that? That is sketchy. I feel like that was a producer-fed line because if a girl told me that she was on Bumble BFF to meet a girlfriend. I would never be like, oh my God, are you bi? No, that would never come to me. Maybe it's a guy way of thinking. By the way, I totally forgot Sophie was bi. It completely escaped my mind. And now I am scared for her for when she tells Rob because if he's gonna react like that to her not wanting to have kids due to medical issues that she has, whoa, how the hell is he gonna react when he finds out that she is bi? And she, I, I don't know. I don't know. It could either go one of two ways. He's either going to be turned on and want a threesome or he's going to get real jealous and real pissed that she hid this from him. But I do know that like I probably should tell Rob soon that I'm bisexual. I've just been putting it off for a bit. I think I should probably tell him soon. You know what else was funny? The fact that Tarai and Rob could not believe that anybody would want to make new friends. They were like, you were on Bumble BFF. Who wants to make new friends? <laughs> I don't know, like people who don't have many friends or want new friends <laughs> to just hang out with. Not everything is about sex, you know. The next morning, Sophie is in tears. She is freaking the fork out. And the producer's like, what the hell happened? And Sophie was like, I had a dream that Rob was online cheating on me. So I decided to look through his phone and dun dun dun. She found some spicy videos of other women in his phone. So she's hurt, she's grossed out, and she's disgusted. He's been getting like disgusting videos from other women and like asking for just like, the videos are disgusting and he's like entertaining it. Now, according to her, this is the second time he's online cheated, but I'm pretty sure it's not the second time, hun. i I'm pretty sure it's just the second time that he's gotten caught. And she also found out that he was sending back spicy videos of himself. So now he's fully engaged in spicy activity. So yeah, I would be pissed. It's just a lot and I just, he's disgusting right now and I just don't want to be like anywhere near him. I've been trying to be perfect, but I'm not perfect, man. I'm not, like, I just want you. I want you in my life. I don't want nobody else. I don't have anywhere to go and I don't trying to like block the pain, but it's, it is a bit difficult. Now this is what always gets me curious. Some people consider watching corn as cheating while others don't. And I feel like everybody's entitled to their opinions and their boundaries. For me personally, I don't feel like it's cheating if someone's just watching corn. But like if you're engaging in it, if you're participating somehow, like Rob participated by sending one back and now they have like a personal connection, they are talking to each other, that is cheating. But if somebody were just going on Corn Hub and just watching some random videos like once a month, uh, I mean, I, I personally don't think that's cheating. But then it's like, how much is too much? Like if my partner were watching Corn every single week, I feel like that's a little much. I would obviously prefer if he didn't watch Corn at all, but. Apparently, it's impossible for men to not watch corn at all. So I want to ask my male viewers, is it possible for men to cut corn off completely if their girlfriend requests it? Let me know in the comments. I just want to know if it's like a reasonable thing to ask a guy to do for me if I uh, enter a relationship with him. So yeah, let me know in the comments because I genuinely want to know. Guess what, you guys? We finally meet the guy with the mom in the closet. 
Finally, this is Clayton. Clayton. I'm 30 years old. I'm a cybersecurity analyst and I live in Lexington, Kentucky. Ooh, that job sounds fancy schmancy. What does a cybersecurity analyst do? It sounds like a six-figure kind of job. Somebody let me know down in the comments. He lives with a bunch of roommates. The first two roommates are his guinea pigs that he likes to dress up in costumes. It was kind of cute, especially the one with the black beret, because it was a French pig, hoink hoink. Oh, little French pig. You're so mad. Look at those teeth chatter. He doesn't want to be in the pretty pig contest. And his other two roommates are these double XL chihuahuas that kind of go, <coughs> Your breath stinks. It's Coco's birthday. And his very last roommate is his mother, Violet, who lives in the closet. Ow, ow. Mamas. Now I know he keeps saying that she lives in a walk-in closet, pretty much implying that it's a pretty big closet. But when you look at it, it's pretty damn small. I mean, technically, sure, you can walk in, but you gotta walk back out because there's nowhere to go. She has just enough room to sleep in there and that's pretty much it. He lives in a one bedroom apartment and when they were apartment hunting and they were touring this apartment before leasing it, his mom saw the closet and she was like, oh my God, Clayton, I can stay here until I save up enough money to get my own apartment. And he was like, okay, sure, mom. Now, three years later, she's still there. This was just a temporary, a little bit longer than temporary, but it's working out. It's been three years. Just tell him you're not going nowhere. Now they both keep mentioning how bad one of the dogs smell. And honestly, before I became a dog lover myself, I used to hate them. Like not hate them. Like I want them to die. I was just more like, ew, they're so gross. They're so stinky. They're so nasty. Look at them drool. Do not come to me. Do not lick me. Ah, you smell. I was one of those. I was like, they're so gross. But after owning my own, I realized it's not the dog's fault. It's the owner's fault. They keep them dirty. They keep them smelly. Not all dogs are smelly and gross. So hopefully he gets his dogs bathed and groomed a nice deep clean before his fiance gets there. His fiance's name is Annalie and they met on a language learning app. He was learning Spanish and she was learning English. After a few weeks, he booked a trip to Peru and he met her in person. And I think he said it was like four days into the trip. He knew she was a one and he proposed and she was like, uh, mm. Yeah, sure. With his fiance arriving very soon, he and his mom cleaned the entire apartment to get rid of everything they don't need to create more space for her. Except there's one little problem. Miss Violet's a hoarder. She doesn't want to throw anything away. There's a granola bar that expired in 2020. Nope, can't throw that away because she barely even opened it. There's a Christmas cookie tin from 1975. Can't throw that away either. Nope. And since his mother is basically not ready to throw anything away, they bring all that junk to the storage unit that they have. And as soon as he opens the door, the garage door, uh-oh, it's pretty much full with even more crap. He's like, whoa, what the hell? When did this get full so quickly? And she's like, mm, yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> All of a sudden, ring, ring, Anna Lee calls and he walks away for some privacy to talk to her. Now, I was very impressed that he spoke actual Spanish. Um, She asks him, are you sure you guys are gonna have enough room for me when I get there? And he's like, mm, yeah, yeah, uh, we're working on it right now. The next morning, Clayton brings his two little guinea piggies to the vet because they're fat. And it's all thanks to his mother because she keeps feeding them so many treats when he tells her to stop feeding the pigs. I feel that though. I have the same exact issues with my two Shih Tzus. My parents just keep treating them when I tell them not to. It drives me insane. So yeah. I feel his pain. So he's talking to the vet and he's like, hey, did you know that South American people eat guinea pigs? And the vet's like, yeah, I do. And he's like, yeah, my fiance has eaten a guinea pig and she always talks about how delicious it was. It's considered a delicacy in Peru. And he's like, I want her to get close to my piggies, but not too close, you know? I don't think that's how it works, okay? I love duck. I freaking love duck. I have the best duck dish was when I was at a restaurant in Boston and it was the most amazing duck I've ever had in my whole entire life. 
Okay, and if my boyfriend were to have a pet duck, I'm not going to be like, oh, ducky wucky, I freaking love you. I'm going to cook you and eat you. <laughs> I'm not, that's not how it works. I would, okay, Clayton, you got to chill, okay? He goes home, he's playing a game with his gaming buddy, and he confides in him. So this whole entire time, her dad doesn't even know I exist. That's kind of alarming. Does she have a relationship with her dad? Oh yeah, oh yeah, she, she talks to him. Uh, he calls her literally like 20 times per day. So they're really close. Her dad thinks she's going there for a job and not because she has a freaking fiance. I wonder why she hasn't told her dad. Um, I can't blame him for feeling worried and anxious and stressed out about how her family doesn't know about him. So we're back at Gino's house and you guys let me know in the comments from my last recap that the toilet stains that he has is either from urine being in there for too long without flushing or not ever, ever, ever cleaning the toilet bowl. Blech. That's so freaking gross. Jasmine is scratching her whole entire body. Her face is swollen and red. She's breaking out in hives. Gino's in the other room, chilling with his new son, Cow Cow. And Jasmine's like, my hives are getting worse. There's something wrong with your house. Like, it's just dirty. It must be all the dirt and the dust and everything. And Gino's very offended by this because he thinks that a dirty house has to have piles of garbage and shit everywhere. So he's like, my house isn't dirty. It's clean. Just some kind of allergy or what? What did you eat? The same food I always eat, baby. I told you, like, the dust, baby, on the carpet. No, not the dust. If it was the dust, you'd have been sick every day. Okay, not trying to side with Gino, but I feel like it could be the food. Because when you move to a different country and you eat their food, your body could have a huge reaction to all the chemicals, the preservatives, and all the other toxic shit that America puts into our food. It could also be the change in temperature and the water, like Michigan is super, super cold and she's used to like the hot, humid, moist weather. Gino continues to emphasize that my house is clean and that she's lived in dirty apartments herself that had mice in it and she freaks the fork out. This pisses her off. You were living in a dirty Just apartment with mice in it. What and mice? What the idiot? The what mice? This is pretty tough. Like, I feel for both of them because they're both very used to living a certain way and now they're together and they have to change it. You know, we're living alone. I get it. But for try now, I'm here. Like, Gino's used to washing his bedding once every six years and Jasmine wants it washed every week. She doesn't want a brown shit-stained toilet while Gino only cares that there is a toilet to shit in. It's a lot for the both of them. And she's like, please, can you just at least get me a new pillow? I just want a new pillow. And can we at least change the damn duvet cover? Okay, you've had that for 13 years. I want something new. And he's like, hmm, no, there's nothing wrong with my pillows. Oh, God. Listen, I've learned people have different perceptions of what clean is is all right so some of you saw gino's house and thought it was perfectly fine and perfectly clean i disagree but that's fine i remember going to someone's house and from afar from a distance everything looked amazing clean neat perfect but that was until i got a little closer then i could see all the stains the pile of dust crumbs and dirt a lot of dirt all over the place Gino finally takes Jasmine to get new bedding. So it looks like they're at some kind of, I, I don't know, a, a bed, bath, and beyond from Wish looking kind of place. And she's looking for her new pillows. And she has a breakdown because she thinks of her two sons. And she feels super guilty about being in America without them. It's Juanse's birthday. She can't be there for him. And she just really misses that. I honestly thought because we never saw her with her kids on the show that she just had completely abandoned them and she was never with them. But no, that's not the case. It was because she chose to not have them on the show. I mean, until now, but this whole time up until now, yeah, it was her choice not to have them on the show. So isn't it crazy how we all kind of thought she was a neglectful mother when in fact she was with them this whole entire time? 
I feel like a horrible person. It's so clear to me that she loves her kids and cares about them so much. So because it's her younger son's birthday, she decides to call him, FaceTime him with Gino and she's crying some more and she's like, I love you, my son. I'm going to get you this soccer themed blanket because you want to be a soccer player when you grow up and blah, 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 blah and she cannot wait to get them to America. Let's see what Devin and Nick are up to. This is gonna be real quick. So they're walking through the streets of Seoul at night, and there's a lot of bright lights, a lot of shopping, a lot of food, there's people everywhere, and it's the total opposite of where she lives. Now this makes Devin afraid of how he'll adapt to Arkansas if this is what he's used to. They stop by a vendor for some chicken skewers, and wow, my mouth watered, that looked so good. While they're eating their chicken skewers, Nick teaches Devin about the Korean table manners when it comes to dining with their elders. For example, when her parents offer her an alcoholic drink, she must accept it with two hands and bow while saying thank you. Also, when she drinks the alcohol, she must put her face like to the side. She can't look directly at them. So she has to like face sideways and like drink and she has to like cover her a uh, mouth kind of if she were to directly stare at them while she was taking her alcoholic beverage it would come off as rude and impolite and she's like oh my god how the hell am I going to remember all these specific table rules and he also tells her oh and by the way my mom wasn't really too happy that I was dating an American Devin's like why haven't you told me about this before and he just goes sorry they kind of think Americans just have one night stands and do drugs and party all night <laughs> And now she's even more nervous than she was before about meeting them. Last but not least, we have Nikki and Justin Igor. So they're still fighting. Remember, Nikki threatens to leave Moldova if Justin Igor doesn't do something to change her mind, aka fork the fork and fork out of her. But he really wants some time. This is all too much happening too fast. He's still trying to wrap his mind around the fact that she's a trans woman. And remember, she told him years into their relationship that she was trans and it was in the middle of, of an argument. So the whole time she's complaining to him about how they used to have amazing intimacy, they used to do it all the time, it's really not fair. That was before he knew that she was a trans woman, so it would only be fair to give him the time to process it and she could talk him through it, you know? She literally tells him, I've never been deprived of schmecks in my whole entire life. You need to do more. Not the roses, not the planning dates. I need more. That's such a bitchy thing to say. She's essentially saying you need to have schmecks with me or else none of this other effort matters. You need to do more than roses and this. I need more. It's got to be a whole lot more. What more? I don't understand. And then she goes, what about me do you like? Is it that I financially support you? And he looks a bit frustrated and he feels like she holds that against him. Baby, you sent so little money. Oh, it's wow. only really? for my Really? Petrol. Really? Really? Ooh, yikes. I sent so little money? Really? Really? Yes. Really? Yes. She's like, what do you mean I send you such little money? Your nose alone was $7,000. Like, don't, don't go there. And he tells her, if this is about money, I pay you back. And she's like, I don't want it back. I just want you to appreciate it and say thank you. Oh, wow. Okay, listen, he was definitely a dick when he told her that she didn't even send him a lot of money. But she's also guilty of using her money to somewhat control him. Or else why would she even bring it up? They're in their confessional scene doing their interview. And she's going off on him. She's like, I need money to eat, babe. I need money to go work out. <laughs> Oh my god, so funny. She is off her rocker. She's going on and on and on and on and on and on and on about everything that Justin Igor is doing wrong. I'm just gonna fly back home. I can't do this for three more weeks. I'm very nice to you. You should be nice to me. I made a lot of effort. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. You did make a lot of effort and I already told you that it was really nice, but I need more. I need your hot dog in my bun right now. Today is second day. Please calm down. Stop fighting. And I don't know, that did the trick because she magically calmed the down and she hugged him and I don't know, I guess things are okay now. Blah. 
I think he acts like a child when it comes to anything that has to do with the intimacy conversation. And he can't handle it, he can't talk about it, he is very private about it, but it's not gonna get anywhere if he doesn't face it. Well then here's an idea, talk about it off camera. Nikki FaceTimes her mom and tells her about all the issues with Justin Igor. And her mom goes, chill the F out. I know how you are. You can go from zero to 100. You got to be patient. And then Nikki's like, okay, mom. So Justin Igor and Nikki Exotica are out to dinner. And they talk about how she wants to go to his gym. But he's like, no, not my gym. Let's go to a different gym. And she's like, why can't we go to your gym? And he's like, well, the ceilings are lower at my gym. So you would be more comfortable at a place where the ceiling is high. And there's a lot of space. And there's that's just a place where all the foreigners go and she's like okay and then all of a sudden she's like oh my god babe I just got clocked like I literally just got clocked apparently they were having a conversation about how she was trans and she felt like someone else hurt uh, maybe it's not because she's trans but instead it's because there are multiple men and women with ginormous cameras and clipboards and microphones and headsets surrounding them Anyway, she's like, listen, I know you accept me for me and that's all that matters. And he's like, stop. He gets up and he walks around to her side of the table and gives her a kiss on the cheek. Oh, how nice. She's very happy, but it's still not enough for her kitty cat. Her kitty cat is very hungry for some Russian sausage. Ooh, that was a lot, y'all. And that is the end of my recap. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments. And I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye!